Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Execration vs. Mineski. This is game 2 of a best of 3 series, and you guys are watching the DACC qualifiers. I'm Luminous and I'm rejoined by Aelson. And I gotta say, uh, Execration definitely surprised a lot of people, especially with their stand-in. Uh, Nando, the carry player, is not here today. Ten seconds but to go. Gabby Loves A has been uh, more than proficient on the Batrider, and Five DJ seconds. apparently very good on carry. I think they executed that uh, lineup pretty well. Yeah. Especially with how important Jay was uh, for Mineski that game and Execration stand in, like, caught him out at crucial times, like, towards the end of the game. Yep. It was the uh, the blink for staff to pop the Lincolns, lasso. I think that was the, the final kill they got on him. And now Mineski yep. is uh, going to have to He's go up against Darkster and Luna combination. Well, Mineski is sticking to their Slardar, but they no longer have a Darkseer. Yeah. Do you feel like the Darkseer-Slardar combination was to go. all that strong last game for them? Uh, I'm not really. I, they they won the lane with it, but, you know, to vacuum into a crush, that, that was pretty much non-existent. Like, it was never used. It was not Sam like that... or Tim's. Yeah, I feel like... If you don't run it like that, it takes away a lot from the combination. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to run it a little bit more traditional. We're going to see Slaughter and Life Slur as a combination instead. I think this is a combo that Mineski ran a lot back in last year. Towards the end of last year when uh, Miracle joined a team. And it's a combo they have a lot of success with. So We'll see how, how well they do. And of course, the, the Life Slur versus the Dark Seer matchup. Although on paper, the Iron Shell should pressure the Life Slur, but it seems like most Life Slur players have learned how to deal, deal with the double Iron Shell and even out CS the Dark Seer in the lanes. I think it was actually kind of recent, right? We watched this exact matchup. I think it was Miracle playing it too. And he yeah. was uh, playing Life Stealer against Dark Seer. Although I, I seem to recall he did play it very close to death a lot of times. Where he has like, you know, sub sub 200 HP and he's walking yep. up to Iron Shell to get that in. Too. Yeah. I remember the exact moment as well. We were discussing this exact matchup and we watched him and he he tanked two Ion Shells to deny a creep and dropped like 400 <laughs> life. It was that worth is what we uh, concluded. Alright. Surprisingly, no support has been selected. Uh, Rubik is still in the pool, although Rubik today have not done exceptionally well. I think he's actually lost all of his games. I think he's still pretty good here for... Well, both both sides. I, I say, I think it's actually better for Mineski at the moment. Okay. Radiance ban. I think Execration can still run it, because Rubik is just one of those heroes where he's pretty decent in most situations. I think Rubik is especially not so good against heroes that could get up to your face and there's not much you could do about it. Life Slayer Slaughter combination being being one of the hardest combination to go up against. But I think pros obviously have much better positioning uh, that could kind of help out, but still. Ten seconds to go. Maybe we'll see a Winter Wyvern. It's one of the go-to supports for the Slaughter Life Stealer. Yeah. They do have a Dark Seer, so it's, there's some potential uh, with that combination. You know, the only C team that we recall picking Winter Wyvern a lot is Afu from uh, WG. They, even they don't pick it anymore, I feel like. There's still an Earth Spirit as well. But I don't think I've ever seen Execration run the Dark Seer Earth Spirit combo. Could be wrong. I don't know. Now today, there's a stand-in. I, I don't know if you want to. It's a right. very hard Try combo plan. Like that. Yeah. Although, do you think that's more Silence on the Dark Seer or more on the, the Earth Spirit? I think it's more on the Earth Spirit, Radiance right? Pig. No, it's more, more on the more on the Dark Seer. So, like the the Earth Spirit just kicks, and it's up to you to blink vacuum on yes, point. Okay. Pretty much. Well, they're gonna have a silencer instead. I think this almost prompts a Bat Rider ban, Ten right? Seconds to go. Oh, never mind. Batrider is... Well, I was going to say Batrider is not an option anymore, but obviously, support bat is a thing. Reserve time. Warlock. There's no... Ooh, Warlock. This is super interesting. Normally, P 
people counter pick your warlock via silencer so that you could get the quick kill on warlock you know during the global silence before the rock comes out yeah i was gonna say like you know picking a warlock into a silencer is real kind of dangerous yeah asking for trouble although I, I think because you have such a strong initiation duel the warlock gets to stay relatively far behind wait out the global and then rock Reserve. Although by that time the team fight might be over, so it's still very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, depending on who they pick off, the fight could just be over in an instant. Yeah. Oh, all right. We kind of forgot oh, about man. this, but how good is Fatal Bond versus Meeple? Not that great, I want to say. I think Fatal Bond like destroys him completely. You think so? But uh, well, the issue is. There's a lot of other targets that it's probably going to bounce to. Okay. And Meepo can probably just wait it out before he... He could easily, he can probably just jump the Warlock himself, even. True. And I, I think that's the... This pick makes a Silencer pick, like... I think much more... Uh, much better, because... I think Meepo's best friend is actually Silencer. Like, a lot of times Meeple jumps in, he kills one, and then he dies. Reserve. But Silencer now circumvenes all of that, and Mineski is going to have a big problem. The reason I don't think Fatal Bond is that good against the Meeple is that if you look at the rest of Mineski's team, they are mostly dealing physical damage, or sorry, single target damage, right? So, if they're going to kill a Meeple, they're going to just kill one Meeple, regardless of he whether he's bonded or not. With that yeah, said, though, the, the Bond is going to bounce a lot of damage to, like, the other heroes, like Dark Darkseer, Silencer, Luna. I think as long as as long as execration play around the global silence, uh, warlock shouldn't be too much of an issue. They just have to be really careful about about that. And I think their last hero should be another type of initiator. I don't think you should rely on a dark seer to jump in and vacuum people for execration. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's, it's only it's it's the support Ten role, so uh, I can't really think of anything. Right I mean, Earth Spirit is the best one, right? Take it well, out. Earth Spirit is banned out. Yeah. Reserve time. Earth shaker. All right. Dyer's Another Meepo. Well, with Poke the Poke counter. Yeah, with, with the addition of uh, Earth Shaker on the pole, suddenly that Fatal Bond becomes excellent, right, <laughs> against Meepo. I, I, I'm like starting to feel like uh, Mineski is greatly underestimating the Silencer pick. I think so too. Depending when the silencer presses the button, like you could just get wrecked in a team fight without doing anything. Reserve time. Oh, that is a support initiator. Did you have this in mind? It used to be the combo, right? I like, had I did not have this in mind. Yeah. But it's very good against the uh Shaker, very good against Warlock. I don't know if it's great against Shaker and Warlock, but it's great against the Slardar jump in. Yep. Like if someone gets targeted, you can uh, potentially snowball people to save them from it. The reason I think and it's then good. You, then you drop global. The thing I, the reason I think it's good against Warlock and Shaker is that you can initiate on them as a support and like kind of mess up the combination, set up your global as well. But uh, yeah, I really like this pick. And correct me if I'm wrong, Tusk could pick up all of the meeples individually, right? And you just yep. get the train going in. Well, let's see how this how this plays out. On paper, it sounds pretty damn good, but yeah. five seconds. all of a sudden, you know, you roll the entire Meeple combo in, and then they get Echo Slammed, and you're just like, well, I guess that doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, you have Global for that, so it's okay. I'm really happy. At the same, at the same time, the Mineski supports are really, really greedy. Earthshaker and Warlock? I don't know about this. I think they're greedy for different things, like Warlock just mostly wants level, right? Shaker mostly wants gold. So in terms of how they split this stuff, I, I think it should be okay. I think it's more like Warlock needs the EXP, mostly. That, that's what I said. Or Shaker needs both. He needs both. Oh, okay. Not just gold. Fair enough, fair enough. Do you have a Spectre icon on your screen? I still do for whatever reason. Mm, no, mine's just fine. Okay. Oh, they have a J life sealer. This used to be Miracle yeah. Zero. Miracle going mid. What is this? Two thousand fourteen. Yeah, man. 
I mean, I, I, I feel like uh, Miracle always swaps between carry and uh, mid lane for almost every team that he's been a part of. I mean, it's been like a couple months where he has exclusively played a carry. Although, obviously, the one and two here in this team also kind of do swap, but I thought they were done with that. I thought I thought we we're going to just see uh, Miracle stick to the safe lane, but I'm going to see him back mid. Is this some um, mid-set adjustment? Maybe. No, uh, talking to Scant, who was uh, the Mineski coach during Boston Major, he says a lot of it just comes down to the two cores uh, preference on, on the heroes. Preference and heroes, right? Yeah, now. and honestly, both of these players have such a wide hero pool that if they you know want to play J mid and, and Miracle safe lane, they definitely can play that combination fine as well. It's more of like, hey, all right. I, I can feel the shadow fiend game. This is me. So, Miracle go. Goldsmith. Well, I, uh, a lot of this hinges on the uh, global global silence. That's that's how I feel about this this draft. Yeah. I think that everything is going to be fairly even, like laning wise and all that kind of stuff. But once the mid game comes in and the team fight start up. I think a lot of it just really depends on how this global silence is going to be used. Also, I want to mention, this is 55 playing the Meepo. He played Kunkka last game as a support. So, not only is Mineski, you know... Oh, changing it up? Yeah, everybody's yeah, changing right. it up. So who's actually playing the support here? Gabby obviously playing the bottom lane. No, Gabby's playing Tusk. No, 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 Gabby uh, loves A, sorry. Kind of red is lane. Gabby, yeah. the Gabby player. Playing, yeah. playing Tusk. Okay. That's quite a quite a extreme change. It's not like carry to mid lane. This is mid lane to support. I mean, the other day, did you see Black Pay Pudge support? That's also. Yeah, but he. I think he only switches for that one hero. Yeah. Just that one hero, Pudge. Maybe this is Gabby's one switch, you know? The one hero. Right. I'm gonna say that Jay is not having a good time, oh, at least right lane. now. Husk, one more hit. Okay. Oh my god, one D hit away. DJ, DJ is completely trapped though. DJ is stuck in there. Oh, oh, but our, our, oh, dude. That trident. That extra range. That's some Monkey King BS right there. Fissure coming off cooldown. Gabby needs to juke this, but... Okay! Oh. Gabby, I see you! Okay, but... Okay. Alright, he's dead. He's still dead. <laughs> that looked pretty sick. And then he realized, oh, I'm, I'm still stuck in here. DJ not level 2 yet. No beams available. Oh, Mineski is off to a great start. Yeah. And the mid lane... That was a really good block by Jules. The Fissure block? Yeah, I, I didn't see the beginning of it, but... Oh, Gabby immediately goes the bottom lane. Ninja Boogie in a little bit of trouble here. Iron Shell. And this is the lane that I, I kind of expected a little bit more. Now, here comes the open moon. I don't think he'll die here. Oh, wait. Yo, these creeps coming in to give a little bit of harass, but... Not gonna be enough. So how's this matchup on the mid lane? I don't I don't think we've seen this matchup too often. The Shadow Fiend versus Meepo. I think that Shadow Fiend Actually I think it's pretty even. Like Meepo just stays in lane until Shadow Fiend hits level five and then I think you don't really try to fight the uh Shadow Fiend anymore. Yeah. I, I don't think either hero have too much kill potential over the other unless like you know one makes a big mistake. I guess if you put it that way, then it's more likely that a Shadow Fiend can lose. Sure. The Meepo has more potential in that in that sense. Yeah. It depends on what, what the build that Meepo goes for as well. I definitely see Meepo sk skip nets too. Although I don't I don't I don't personally agree with that, but Well R is just having a time of his life up here, just CSing away. Actually, like getting every one of them under the tower. That's pretty impressive stuff. Catching back up. That's why you buy Quelling Blade. Yeah. Well, the stand is having the highest CS in the whole game. That's uh, good to see. But. You just drop some iron shells and creeps, and it's pretty easy. Yeah, he's having an easy time down here because it's, it's a lifestealer and a warlock. What are you going to do to a Darkseer? He just surges and just 
that's, that's the end of your attempt. Yep. So every lane is kind of going kind of as, as expected. I think the double kill up top is the only unexpected thing about this. Yeah. But I, I kind of expect every lane to just be somewhat passive. The only uh, potential kill is to just completely relies on how Gabby does on this uh, Tusk. Yeah. I, I think actually Maneski needs to pay a little bit more attention to R up top because once the mid game rolls around, like when you have Warlock and Earthshaker as your support, they don't have too much roaming potential. So I think Slaughter is really on charge of keeping the Meepo shut down. And if you can shut down R now, then I think Meepo in a bit is going to have a much better time. Oh. Gabby was getting a last word on him, so he, he didn't really feel like he was uh, losing HP because he wasn't. So this Invis Iron Shell was doing a little bit of work. Okay, yeah, and Meepo is just farming jungle now. Because I don't think you want to trade against the Shadow Fiend in the middle there. Okay, they want Gabby. Gabby's. Oh, sorry, not Gabby. The Gabby loves A. He has Surge. We'll have to use it. But looks like they force him a Shrine. Not the biggest deal, honestly. Oh, Shrine's on cooldown. Okay, so he has to kind of walk it off here. Kind of interesting to see that Miracle is playing so... Oh, that Fissure Yo. made his angle so strange. Yeah, he did. It was the Fissure and the Ice Shard. It made him... Ang it angled his uh, path to the right. I wonder what was his input for that. Like, was he just... Did he right-click onto the thing? I think he just, like, moved command, and then... His hero just moved in a very awkward spot. Well, what is... I Jay think he just right-clicked Tusk. Yo, Jay is yeah, looking to like gank. What is happening right now? Jay walks across a field, and now he's looking to poof out. Good play by 55. Moves Meepo towards Life Slur and the other one away. You want top lane? Or finds a kill, man. So I say you need to shut down this Slaughter. He is having a grand old time. I mean, the bigger issue, too, is that Meepo wait, 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 isn't exactly... Bottom, Ninja Boogie getting chased down. He does have the Iron Shell on him, but he's also being healed up. And now Shadow Fiend's going to port in. Gabby's somewhat trapped in there, but he has Surge, so he's going to run away. Meanwhile, Jay on the back line looking to open wound him up. Surge is pretty high level, though. Gabby so. recognizing this. Surge is back up. Yeah, he's fine. That's a lot of time being wasted. Yeah, they got Miracle to TP down there as well. Some some space created. Oh, kind of interesting to see. The Miracle doesn't go for a bottle. Wait, really? This is like the first time I've seen Shadow Fiend not going bottle. Yeah, I don't really see this ever. Yeah. I mean, he, his spells are just so mana intensive. How can you not bottle? Maybe he'll go back. He just right? opts for mono region altogether. Oh, they see Gabby. Gabby's gonna roll, but now they're gonna bring him closer to the tower. Okay, nice shard blocking off the Fissure. Not really on point, but the TP's coming in here from the Life Sealer. Open Moon say he wants a Luna instead. I don't know about this now. Okay, Jay's gonna focus on target. Gabby, I think, still dead, but the Ice Shard slowing him down. The Infest is gonna actually hit the Ooh. infused raindrops. And they still see Gabby. Gabby's <laughs> making them work for it, but they get the kill. And meanwhile, I think Shadow Fiend just picked up a, a free kill in the back line. Okay. These ice shards are pretty pretty damn funny. Like you can see it, uh, how well he understands this hero. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's not it's not gonna save him there. I mean, if he had a TP, maybe. But yeah, there was a fissure lined up for him. He was dead. Yeah. And smoke coming out of execration. Gabby is down here. Trying to find Ninja Boogie. Ninja Boogie is almost level six. Yeah. Well, he's gonna get six from this room, right? Yeah. Oh, he he'll die here, but... Oh, TP out. Wait. Wait! Got him. So that's another smoke used from Execration to no success. And R finds another kill on DJ. Yep. I guess they just walked up to... To them and killed them. 
Well, I'm not too sure. It's kind of hard to tell because they do have a lane ward. So maybe a smoke was used. Yeah. Mara is in bottom lane now. He's playing super like aggressive. That's be the end of the push. Yeah. So, yep. I mean, they got DJ coming in here now too, though. I mean, Ninja Boogie's got rock. Like, I don't know if you want to fight into this. A Shadow Fiend TP could be very dangerous. Speaking of Shadow Fiend, looks like he's just fairing out clarities. Forget the bottle. Going for that Dragon Lance. I guess Ring of Aquila and uh, the Raindrops is more than enough for Mana Region. Yeah. Like you can't raise as, as aggressively when it comes to farm. Here comes the three man rock. Fatal Bond's gonna be up there as well. Nice chain stun against uh, the Darkseid. Darkseid dead. Nice Fissure gets one, clips the other. DJ's on the run, but I think that's all they're gonna get here. Or, oh god. He's gonna get healed back up. He'll be okay. Yeah, it's like you said. Warlock being level six, fighting into the rock wasn't exactly the, the plan they had in mind. Yeah. Very good coordination by Mineski there too. It was a rock, immediate crush, and immediate TP from the Shaker. All right. That was a very nicely placed Fissure as well. Yeah. Stunning both of them. Miracle definitely checking the runes like he has a bottle. He's been very active on the map. And he will run into... He's 54. got a Requiem and an Invis. Is he going to find the Meepo? No, Meepo is hiding. I mean, Miracle guesses like the... what, Where he should be. He's going to run into DJ. He could easily double raise and kill him. Oh! Just walks the other way. Wait, 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 wait. Did he notice that the creep's getting... He didn't notice. I think I would consider that a very, very lucky for DJ. Yeah, and he dodges the smoke gang as well. The smoke gang just runs up top. Meanwhile, the rest of uh, Execration is looking to pressure bottom. 55 has already a meeple there, so the rest will come. And that's going to be a tower. Looks like two tier ones for Mineski, trading just one tier one bottom yep. lane. So do you favor any one team over the other? I mean, the score is seven to one. Gold graph is three thousand Mineski. Are a really good spot. Okay. Because with the way the game is progressing right now, they're gonna have, you know, the necessary tools to deal with this global silence. Like, look at RR, he's got his blink dagger already. Yeah. This is 12 minute off lane blink. Like, this is actually insane. And they're gonna finish Roshan as well. Yeah. So they can easily take more objectives with it. But it looks like Execration, they have a different plan in mind. They're gonna stop them. Yeah, this was spotted out. Here comes the Surge. Nice Ice Shard. The Global's gonna be on top, but where's the follow-up? There you go, they're gonna focus on the Shadow Fiend. The rest of the team being isolated out. Fissure keeping him alive a little bit longer. Here comes the Eclipse from DJ, but they want to fight him. I think DJ might overstay his welcome. Rock not up for 10 more, 15 more seconds. Ice Shard traps two more hero as well, but Jay's in there. He's looking to fight more. Shadow Fiend buys back. A nice arm the toggle by Jay, but it looks like he will not be able to arm the toggle this one. And that was a buyback. Looks like one of the uh, links killed one, and now our... Oh my god, the fatal on the centaur killed him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're going, they're going for more. He's trying to catch out the meeple. He does have that blink. No mana for the crush, though. But that was a buyback on Shadow Fiend. I think overall, that was pretty good. And if you guys are wondering why Gabby is playing Tusk, I think in that engagement, we saw why. Like, two eye shard back-to-back -back was absolutely game-winning. The first one in particular. Right, they go back. If they if they get this Roshan, it was it was perfectly worth okay it for them for the buyback. Okay. Well, they have to get it, and is the rest of the team coming back in? Looks like they're gonna just give it up here. And that was cutting it close for execration because Ninja Boogie's ult was almost cooling down. And if they had ult there, I think that fight would have been much harder. I shard coming again. I think again. If they had ult there. Yo, if you're gonna steal this, oh my god, he almost got Ooh, it. That was so close. Yeah, and he's gonna die here. But good try, I think. Especially for a support role to make that play. I, I think if they had a uh, Warlock ulti, that fight would have been completely lost for Execration. Yeah. The only reason why they even attempted that is because they knew it was down. Oh my goodness. And Earthshaker has Blink Dagger. Jules is insanely farmed. Yeah, I'm not sure how he got that farm. I, I guess he got a couple kills in that engagement. That helps. Getting well, I mean, he's 4 0 and 6, so he's doing really well for himself. And 
this is looking scary for execration now. Now there's no global as well. Oh, it's up in ten seconds though. Are you like? Can you just say, look, we have a meepo. We're gonna ride the ride the coattails of a meepo and, and just win. Because we've definitely seen games being turned around single-handedly by meepos in the past. While that's true, I don't think this is the game for it. Okay. There's just so much AOE. It, it's like it's so difficult to position yourself for a team fight as a meepo here. Yeah. The global has to do a lot. In the in the next couple of team fights. Yeah, they they basically need to get everything done within the global, because if they don't, then you know you're you're looking at a blink echo, uh, chaotic offering, even even a potential like blink crush from Sargar. It's, it's just a lot to deal with as a meepo. Yeah. Mineski could have actually just pushed for the tier two, but they don't want to give anything up. In fact, they're looking to defend the tower, and recognizing that execration will all back off. Fifty five ports to the mid lane and. Looks like he is uh, working towards that blink dagger. Two drag lands would be his variation. And Ninja Boogie picks up a smoke. I actually was really wondering where the smokes were gonna be coming from. They have they have blink on the Earthshaker and on the Sardar. They should definitely be utilizing smokes now to take objectives. Pretty sure that Jules has stayed outside of vision range this whole time. And he's still hiding his blink. I wonder if they have Tome of Experience. I would definitely give all the Tome of Experiences to uh, Jules, if possible. What exactly is the point that he's trying to hit? Level 10? Level 12? 15? Uh, you just want to max out your Aftershock. Okay. Makes, it, makes it so that your, your combo is that much smoother. Well, tier 2 is going to go down, and honestly, there's no reply anywhere from Integration. Well, Jules TP's up top. <laughs> that Fissure almost accidentally hit someone that was TPing in the tree. Alright, Execration does have the number advantage, at least for now, Shaker Shing up top. But immediate smoke here by Mineski, RR with the life slur inside of him, they see with the ward. They ping out the darks there, but where will get chopped down? DJ on the right side is 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 he gonna break the smoke? Well, they see Miracle walking down middle lane, so they have to be aware that something is up. Yeah. Ooh, a Miracle is actually just going straight for a BKB. You know, for the fact that he didn't have bottle, I don't think we ever commented on him like not having like enough mana and beast up. Seems to be very good at keeping himself uh, filled up. He's, I guess he's just uh, okay with being supplied by Arcane two Arcane. Yeah. yeah. What do you think about the, the PKB first item kind of with Shadow Fiend? Uh, personally, I'm not too big of a fan. But I guess they... I guess he feels that... um. It's necessary to win the team fights like really, really cleanly that are yeah. about to come up because you can just BKB off the global, and then by doing so, you know, having the requiem with the or for the start of the fight is just going to be really big. And like you said, execration. If they're winning team fights, they have to do it during the global. And Shadowfin being able to ult is going to cut off a lot of that damage. Oh, Mineski, have to be careful here. They dodge a bullet. And you definitely don't want to take an engagement without their Shadow Fiend. Miracle wanted to wait for his uh, BKB before trying anything. Not to mention his TP is still on cooldown. Yep. Spin actively fearing himself those clarity though. That's that's what I like to see. The Aegis runs out. Global. Oh, that was a global. They tried to kill Jules. Did he just blink away? Yeah, he just blinked away. All right, now just go down mid, right? If you're if you're Vinesky. He denied the tower and baited out a global silence. Oh, they see Luna. Luna's gonna get caught here. Open wounds. The right click's gonna come through. DJ does not have a Mantis out just yet. He gets picked. TP gets canceled. Tier two under siege. 
And all of a sudden, Mineski, probably with a tier 2, just walk up the high ground to start poking it a bit. If the Shaker wants to come, Shaker is already rotating over. They can't go just yet, because Ninja Boogie is in the top lane right now. So I guess their plan of action is just to take that last tier 2. Okay. Where is... Okay, yeah. So Shadow Fiend Teeth is up top. They're going to start pushing up this, this lane. I wonder if it's actually worth it for Mineski to just pick up a dagger here. Or not a dagger. A uh, gem as well. I think they could actually... Like, suffocate. Or choke out uh, Execration's farm completely. Yeah, especially if put on somebody base. like Jules, right? He's... With the blink and, and the fissure, he's going to be somewhat... Difficult to catch. Let's see, what is Ninja Boogie working on? He's gonna be getting Glimmer Cape. Okay, good defensive item. And it looks like Mar Marigold is gonna get the the last tower essentially for free here. Execration don't have global for another thirty seconds. I, I I don't think there's any way they can take a team fight without it. Yep. And Meeple's not the least he, uh, net worth hero anymore. Shadow Fiend has climbed ahead. This Meepo is working towards that first Ethereal Blade. Only 2,000... 2,100 off. Now, have you felt the impact of the Meepo at all, this game? No, not at all. They, yeah. they, I mean, they just they just can't fight. It's, it's not enough. He needs his team to fight with him. I mean, normally, like, Meepo that doesn't look to team fight, he still is the highest CS in the game, or highest farmer in the game, and he's still like solo picking off people. And I feel like 55 have not achieved either of that. Yeah, Men Mineski is just doing a good job, you know, sticking together. They know as a team, they're very, very strong. Mm -hmm. So Execration doesn't exactly have many openings to uh, get pickoffs uh, over across the map. So the outer objectives, just one shrine remaining. I think Minescu will probably wait for the next Roshan before they try anything. Yeah, I think they got a lot of time on their hands. Their supports. I still think they should get a, a gem. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Aura picked up a gem. Okay. Alright, it's time to go dewarding. You need to go check all the hills. Unfortunately, he ran right. Didn't pick, find the uh, the ward in the mid middle lane. Wait, got him. One more ward. Honestly, this ward doesn't really see too much either. Uh, uh, realistically speaking, I think Execration are pretty much blind on the map now. Yeah, I mean, it sees Mineski not being there. Does that help you a oh, bit? He's gonna he's gonna run into this one too. All right, yeah. goodbye, last ward. No, Quelling Blade. It. Rest in peace, one hundred gold. <laughs> fine he's got more important things in mind like looking to where to deliver that life slayer bomb well meeples wait he's in. gonna find the meepo meepo question mark he's gonna try to pour it out but these ones are gonna get cancelled now the life slayer is gonna pop out here okay nice ghost scepter maybe should have gone for the non main one global set global being used just defensively but rr could actually still catch them Okay, nice net as well as Curse. The rock has been committed. They're fighting through the wall. I think this perhaps was a little bit too much. Echo oh, slap from Jules! And where's the fissure? Okay, no fissure just yet, and they just proof out. Both teams using a ton of resource and getting absolutely nothing in return. Rock and Global. What happened to his fissure? I, I guess he used it earlier to farm and didn't have it. Is that what happened? Oh, he used it before he came in. I'm not sure. DJ coming in. I think DJ spotted, right? Oh, they, there's no vision through these trees. That's unfortunate. That was such a, a huge echo. <laughs> they use echo and rock and global, and not a single person died. But Mineski do pick up Roshan. Well, Shadow Fiend's kind of halfway done with this butterfly, so that's pretty decent. Kind of surprised to see him not go for that uh, that Manta build. Yeah. 
Oh, Link Crush. Goodbye, Silencer. Just dead. That gem starting to pay dividends. That's like three or four wards that has chopped down already, right? I believe three. Yeah. Yes. Looks like Warlock's gonna be going for Aether Lens. I don't think I've actually seen an Aether Lens build, but I can definitely appreciate the uh, the idea. You know, strangely, I've seen March go for this build when he plays Carry Warlock. He goes Midas Refresher Ags, and then he goes back for an Aether Lens. Which is super odd, because you buy 8 lenses like your 4th or 5th item, but... He says that in, in that point of game, especially when you have Refresher, getting off two good fatal bonds is game winning, so... I guess maybe uh, just versus the Meepo in this game, he just want to get off a very good bond. Yeah, I, I can definitely understand that kind of build as well. Because it's not, you know, as important. But, uh... What's that thought? So we have a... High ground push here. Yeah. I mean, Jay's got the the Aegis, so should be more than happy to walk up and start hitting it. Can't right, here comes the Nets. Structures right now. Are they gonna see this ward? We got it. Okay. I mean, Execution look like they can't <laughs> do anything. They're just watching. They can. Rest. Yeah. All right. They have global ready here. Life Slayer is going to go up and go up. Oh, oh my no. god. The global is going to come out and they, that's a defensive punch. Meanwhile, on the back line here, Meepo poops back in and you need to win this team fight. Miracle letting his own rip and oh my god, all the Meepo trap in there. They just blow him out. Meanwhile, DJ has his BKB activated, but the BKB is about to run out. Jay's going to respawn. The Meepo buys back and TP's in only to watch his range racks die. I think Mineski is more than happy to stay here. Yeah, everyone's all gassed back up. And they're gonna look to taking taking the second lane of Rax here. They have to be kind of careful. I think the the Dark Seer has four staff, so a potential combo isn't out of the question. Okay. Oh, he forces RR in and runs away. Yeah. Easy two lanes of Rax. And that's a global use. They don't have global. If Mineski really wanted to, I think they could just march down the last uh, set of lane. Uh, March down the last set of racks. Yeah, to me that was a little bit of lazy positioning by the silencer, getting so close to the Lysler. He essentially used global just to save himself, which... I don't know if his team wanted to initiate then, but they kind of were forced into initiating. Alright, I think this is the... All or nothing smoke? Wait, is there even a smoke? I don't even see a smoke. No, they just walking past the river. Uh oh, and he's gonna go down again. Well, Two hits. Oh no! It's gonna be three. Not like this. He has a blink. He has a blink. I mean, they have amp on him. Blink crush? Okay, cool down on blink. Yeah, and they're just. Slowly pushing out this bottom lane. Alright, someone needs to come and hit these creeps. Warlock is not enough. He's doing it so slowly. Now why is Shadowfee not doing it? Maybe he's trying to get farm to Warlock? Warlock has a mech. I don't think so. Warlock's he already also... got his mech. He's not really close to anything. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's just cutting the lane or thinking about cutting the lane. Oh man, all these wards gone. This gem paying off. Checking on Dire Vision. They have no vision. They have no vision. Everything's gone. Radiant well, scans for a wrap around. There won't be any. And they could just right, walk they're smoked up. up. This might be it. They need to they need to kill off this warlock and this uh, Earthshaker if possible during the global. Like that's pretty much the only way they're gonna win. And Earthshaker already has Lotus Orb, so that's pretty much out of the question. All right, they punch oh, and Warlock up. has Greaves. Okay. Warlock Miracles. has Greaves as well, so that's out of the question as well. I mean, they still could Meepo poof with global, but no, it's gonna be initiation the other way. That's a Darkstar dead immediately, DJ. 
That's not BKB, so they don't want to force it too much. But with the Dark Stare dead, that's a lot of team fight down the drain. All right, Blink. And They're just going. Yeah, the Grieve gets used, and the Rock comes down. The Fatal Bond, the Echoes. Oh my they God! GG. They just called GG immediately as soon as they saw the Warlock go came down. They were, they were done. Well, <laughs> that's one of the funnier GGs I've ever I've seen called. <laughs> they knew what was gonna happen. Scores. And that was, that was a beatdown. Yeah, what a convincing win. Yeah. What went Almost wrong? Almost another three two two. What went wrong for uh, execution? Do you think? I think the laning phase was just not good enough, and I, I mentioned the Earthshaker and the Warlock being slightly greedy of support. Yep. But it turns out that wasn't the case. It was perfectly fine. Like Warlock just kept pulling in the bottom lane. He got level six like in eight minutes, and Jewels dueling with the Sardar. They both finished their dagger in what I think RR finished his dagger in eleven minutes, and Jewels finished his in like fourteen. I, I think that. I mean, I don't disagree that they're greedy support. It's just that I don't think uh, Execration was able to punish them, right? The only active mobile hero was Gabby. And he wasn't, honestly, he had a lot of great uh, shards played, but he wasn't able to kind of severe the map in half and start killing people with the Iron Shell. So I felt like the greed was not punished against Mineski. I think another more important thing too was that they just weren't able to accomplish anything with their Global Silence. Yeah. I think throughout the entire game, the Global Silence hasn't really secured them any victories apart from... The Roche, the Roche Pit one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even know if, you, if I can consider that a victory. Because they just bought back and came back in. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I think that was like pretty much a break even because they... Overall, they like netted a, a decent amount from just taking, taking down both the cores. But then it it's just evens out again because they lose Roshan. Also, this is the first time I, s I felt like a Meepo did absolutely nothing in this game, right? Like, he had no mid-game impact. He just kind of farmed, farmed. He didn't. He wasn't able to pick off anybody. I think that's more credit to Mineski, not getting caught out at all. Yeah, they just didn't get ca caught out. And I, I, honestly, I think their entire lineup just deals very well with uh, against the Meepo. Like, yeah. all of them have AoE or that kind of thing. Well, that was a very strong a game two by Mineski. They now even the series one game apiece. After a break, we're going to go into game three, uh, the decider between Execration and Mineski. Do you want to hear it, guys? We're going to take a break, and we'll be back.